Hi everyone, welcome back to Once Upon a Melody, or welcome if you're new. I'm Melody, and today we are going to be discussing Eyelet and their comeback, going over what I thought of them for their debut and if I was wrong or not. <laughs> So to refresh everyone's memory, we're going to start out with a brief history of Islet, where they came from, how they were formed, that kind of thing. If you already know all this information, you can just watch my cat Spidey back here cleaning herself to entertain you, or you can skip ahead if you want, that's fine too. Where did they come from? They were formed on the survival show called Are You Next? Islet consists of five members, Yuna, Minju, Moko, Wani, and Iroha. They range in age now from 20 all the way down to 16. They were around the ages of 19 to 16 when they debuted in international age, of course. Our two members are also Japanese, Moka and Iroha are Japanese, and the other three are Korean. The group was going to be six members originally, but member Young So left before their debut on January 5th, 2024, for unknown reasons, but her contract was dissolved through a mutual agreement with their management, meaning she wasn't fired for any untoward reasons. Eyelight debuted on March 25th, 2024, under B Lift Labs, which is a subsidiary of Hive Entertainment with their first album titled Super Real Me and their hit song Magnetic. Magnetic currently has 162 million views on YouTube for their music video and over 432 million streams on Spotify. The song was produced by Slow Rabbit, a prolific high producer and hitman bang, Bang shi Hook, the former CEO of Hybe and B-Lift Lab. I reacted to Magnetic at the time that it came out and I liked and still do like the song, um, but I thought that their concept at the time was pretty similar to New Jeans, and so I didn't really think too much about the group at that moment in time. And I still think that the comparison to New Jeans is there in terms of Eyelet's concepts and looks for Magnetic, the kind of late 90s pop sound, and what is called new vintage basically where they take something old and make it new again. Some scenes in the music video for Magnetic are also similar to Ditto and OMG. Not the same, similar. Don't come at me. For example, the hand cam filming scenes, or at least they look like they were filmed with a hand cam, their styling in the music video with the long free-flowing hair, um, natural color, and minimal makeup, which is also a fifth gen trend that started with new jeans. There's also the fast beat of the song, the doodles coming to life specifically in Magnetic. There's the doodle of the unicorn, uh, which turns into a real stuffed unicorn. And then in OMG, of course, there's the doodles that come and take over the town. But that's kind of the extent of the similarities for me. Like it's Definitely not an obvious ripoff of New Jeans or anything like that, but it is similar in the way that you can tell well, that they're both fifth gen groups, at least. Um, I didn't realize at the time when I made my first reaction that Menhejin, the former CEO and, and current creative director for Adore, which is New Jeans management company, was involved in a lawsuit with Hybe, the entertainment company that owns both Adore and B-Lift Labs, which is Islet's management company, for this exact reason. Of course, having similar groups under the same label is not a crime in any way that I'm aware of, at least. They did not plagiarize any songs or any specific parts of any music videos, to my knowledge. And then Islet's B-side, Lucky Girl Syndrome, was released on April 16th of 2024 which has now over 36 million views on YouTube and 63 million streams on Spotify. This song continues their dreamy concept with the girls nearly escaping unlucky situations while describing their idyllic world that they would want to live in. While their outfits in this music video are decidedly early 2000s, for example, Iroha's and Wani's outfits 
are definitely something that I would have worn when I was a preteen in the early 2000s, because yes, I'm old. Um, <laughs> the sound and look of the music video gives a different but still vintage feel. The girls do use a digital camera at one point in the music video, but there's no other vintage objects that really stand out. The dance and the song for Lucky Girl Syndrome are both very addictive and fun to watch. Their other B-sides, Midnight Fiction and My World, are both continuing with that dreamy concept as well. Their song Midnight Fiction really reminds me of Taylor Swift's love story if it were stripped from the country sound and just purely a pop song. My world is definitely more of that kind of dream concept than any other songs on the album. Sonny, what are you doing? It's <laughs> being cute. So their concept is definitely more dream world than what New Jean's concept is, which is kind of modern girls exploring self-discovery with a vintage twist. So now we'll move on to the backlash that Islet has received since their debut. Besides the issues with Adore, Minhejin, and Hive, the group has also gotten hate for lip syncing. Lip syncing itself is not a crime. It is very, very common within the K-pop world that Korean music shows tend to use as they can control the way that the group is presented more. And it is so common, in fact, that I do wonder if this hate was forced to the point where the girls were literally getting bullied online for lip syncing. But if you watch, if you watch Eyelid's live singing, however, it is not horrible. Like it's not at the level of some other groups, you know, like Mamamoo or Inmix, for example, but who is at their level? I just wanna be cool, but I just wanna hide that I won't be. Wait a minute, it gets much in this gym down when you left out. Check your mind yeah, show on me so no all my gosh, good old and the yard, my cross turn on your total. They're also a newer group, so they're not as versed in the ways of live singing yet. The way that groups, especially girl groups, are oversaturated, Islet had to train and debut very quickly and these groups nowadays are often just simply not given enough time to train before they do debut. Are You Next ended in September 1st of 2023 and the group debuted in March of 2024. That's only six months of training together as a group. When members of other groups like Blackpink, for example, train for an average of five years in total. So for Islet's training, Yuna trained the longest for about four to five years. Minju is a former YG trainee and she trained under them for about four years before debuting in Islet. Iroha is a former JYP trainee, although her length of time training with them is unknown. She at least had some sort of training before she joined the group. Mocha's training history is unknown at this time and Wani did not train under any other companies that we know of before joining Are You Next. So given all of this with their fast debut date, what do we really expect from them? I mean, do we expect for them to have been professionals straight out of the gate? Like, I don't think so. So if the company really wanted to give them a fighting chance, they should have trained for at least a year together. But then would the audience of Are You Next have been patient enough for that? Or would they have forgotten about them? Islet also received hate for getting an ambassador contract before their debut with Acne Studios. The members said of their ambassadorship, after our team was formed and we began preparing for our debut album, we tried to showcase styles that feel true to us, styles that reflect who we are on social media. We were so excited to hear Acne Studios wanted to chat and work with us after noticing us and our creative world.
So during their promotions for Acne Studios, they were also prepping for their debut. So they were very, very busy in this six month period. And because of their connections, because of Hive, a lot of people online thought that they were being set up to be bigger than current groups that they viewed to be quote unquote more deserving of these opportunities. So now we'll take a look at their current content. So the song Cherish My Love is their comeback. Let me pull it up and we'll get a reaction here. <laughs> yeah. Got some gum going on the mirror here. They're checking out their wisdom teeth, the Sarangni. I like Mocha's. Oh no, that's Minju. I like her uh, contacts there. You know what? Not even God can stop. Not even God can stop. <laughs> So we got, we got the kind of whisper, um, not exactly whisper. She's very, she sounds much more confident in this one than in the last one, but that kind of intro, like in magnetic, I like that kind of callback. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> She's got this red glow in her cheek, like her wisdom tooth is hurting or something. In the trailer for this, it was, you know, you can join if you're under 21 or something like that, because the the average age for getting wisdom teeth removed is 21, which is when I had my wisdom teeth removed, as a matter of fact. Um, so it's, you know, it's got this feeling of young women um, who Islet kind of are an ambassador for at the moment. I guess in Korean age, Yuna would be 21. The Sarangni Club. Ooh, her teeth are glowing. Ooh, I really love Yuna's vocals there. It's very, like I was saying before, it's very dreamy, very ethereal vocals. You see their live performances online. Of course, I won't, probably won't be able to react to those because those always get super, super copyright claimed. Uh, Oh, this is cute. So this was in the trailer as well. I like the dance. So I feel like the beat of this song is a little bit different. It's not really 90s, early 2000s. This one is definitely more 80s, which I enjoy. I really like 80s music anyways. So the kind of message of the song, if you will, is kind of cherish my love before it goes away or before we grow older, um, which I kind of... I think that's a, you know, I think it's a cute, cute song that's really appropriate for their age group. Oh, I love that. That's cute. Yeah. Ooh. They're just, <laughs> their mouths are just glowing. I don't know why that's kind of trippy, kind of nightmarish. So like one very common nightmare that people have is losing their teeth or their teeth falling out. So I think that's kind of where this concept is coming from. I heard that Yuna actually was the one that came up with the um, like wisdom teeth concept. So I think that's really fun that they're incorporating the girls' ideas. I'm really liking Yuna's vocals in this song too. So they're planting their wisdom teeth now. Oh, I like that dance move. That was really fun. Wait, I want to see that again. I liked how it kind of went like dominoes there with the other members. I love that. She's hypnotizing us with the tooth. I love that. I love that kind of um, sing rapping when, when groups do that. And it's not just like a full on rap. I think it fits the song a lot better than just having a full on rap in a non rap song, if you know what I mean. Now the blinged teeth there. <laughs> the gum got bigger. <laughs> See what I mean about like different kind of dream elements coming into play. <laughs> that is a high slit on that skirt. It looks like they have shorts underneath though, so I guess that's okay, but woo. <laughs> uh, there's <laughs> on the hand dryer, there's a sticker. I wonder if that's gonna be part of their album content. That would be fun to have that same sticker. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, I feel like Yuna's more of the center in this music video. I really like it. 
Ooh, I like this bridge part. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a giant dentist monster, dental tool monster. See, this is like also a thing that I feel like would show up in a dream. It's just like this weird amalgamation monster that makes no sense. I really love this dance too. Their dances are so fun and addictive to watch. I really enjoy that about them. Oh, there goes the wisdom tooth pulling the sword out. <laughs> she just has a giant rocket launcher with stuffed animals on it. That is so cute. They all have different weapons made out of teeth. That's crazy. They look very sad to be getting rid of their wisdom teeth. See, it's kind of like a metaphor for their youth. Um, so once their youth is over, their wisdom teeth get removed. That's kind of sad at the same time um, that it is talking about, you know, how they're a youthful group but like this youth is not going to last forever and like this love of their youth will not last forever forever either i really like that kind of metaphor <laughs> and now they're all healing that was very cute so yeah like i said it is still very much following the concept of like dream nightmare landscape and combining that with the more vintage elements i feel like in this one there really weren't as many vintage elements except for like they seem to be in a school setting with like a school the school club for sarangni and all of that otherwise like there weren't really as many vintage elements as there have been in their other songs so we can see them kind of moving away from that um which i like i like it when groups have their own individual concepts that they work with instead of reusing other concepts so i feel like in that way um to answer the question of this video was i wrong about islet yes i feel like at this point i can say yeah i was wrong so i really enjoyed it um, but let me know your thoughts on their comeback down below. I think they do have one other song. I think Pimple is going to get a music video too. Maybe that will be in my next video. I will review their live performances along with their B-side Pimple if a music video does come out for that. I'm fairly certain one will at least for one other song but in the meantime please let me know your thoughts down below in the comments what you thought of Cherish what you think of Islet if your opinion on them changed at all with this comeback or not I want to know so leave me a comment down below if you're new or old to this channel you can give this video a like or a dislike if you didn't like it it is all engagement to me and if you are new around here and you want to stick around, make sure you click on that subscribe button. I mainly do um, K-pop commentary videos now. I've kind of moved away from reactions, but I will still be doing a series with Benny. I'm in the middle of reacting to their documentary series right now. I have part one up if you want to go watch that. And otherwise, as always, drink some water, take your medicine, and eat something today if you haven't done those three things yet. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye! <laughs> Gotta wait for this loud vehicle to disappear. This is what I deal with on a daily basis. Beautiful, isn't it? It's wonderful sounds. Mm -hmm.